When you think about the tarp tent double rainbow lithium, I want you to ask yourself this question. What am I getting for 27 ounces? And take a look at any other tent on the market that weighs 27 ounces or less, or let's, let's just say two pounds or less, and ask yourself if you can get what you can get with the tarp tent double rainbow lithium in terms of living area and volume, usability, quality of construction of materials, and weather resistance. I think you're going to be hard pressed to find anything in this weight range that provides everything that this tent provides. Okay, with that as an introduction, let's get on to the review. Okay, today we are talking about the tent behind me, which is the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Lithium model. That's the model that uses Dyneema composite fabrics as the main tent body and floor fabric, as opposed to the traditional Double Rainbow, which is made with silicone coated nylon. This is a two person side entry, double door, double vestibule, hybrid single slash double wall tent. The tent provides a lot of living space. It's a fairly sizable tent. It's got a large floor area that's suitable for two 25 inch sleeping pads side by side, even long length pads, and a lot of usable volume inside as a result of that arch pull. Now, get this, it's 27 ounces. It's a pretty remarkable weight for a tent of this size, footprint, and volume. The tent requires six stakes to pitch, one on each corner of the body and one for each vestibule. I added two stakes and guy lines to stabilize the arch pole today because I knew we were getting snow last night and I wanted to have good snow loading ability and good wind ability because we had some high winds last night as well. In addition, if you want to use the tent in what's called porch mode, which I'll talk about in a little bit, you need two additional stakes and of course trekking poles or sticks to set that up. Let's talk about the materials used in the tent. Lots of advantages to Dyneema composite fabrics. It's easy to repair. It does not stretch when it's wet so that your tent doesn't sag during an overnight rainstorm. And its strength to weight ratio is very high. So you can get away with using much lighter fabrics without losing any strength in the tent. The challenge in using Dyneema composite fabrics in a tent is that because it doesn't stretch, it's not very forgiving. And so the, the engineering, the design, and the cutting of the fabric needs to be very, very precise. And Tarp Tent has once again shown with this model that they have the process pretty dialed in in terms of being able to cut and design a Dyneema Composite Fabrics tent to a level of precision that allows for a very taut pitch. The interior sidewalls are made with Nosea mesh and then along the bottom of the sidewall, there is a solid fabric nylon panel, a very, very light panel. In fact, this fabric they're using in the Lithium Series is lighter than uh, the other fabrics that you've seen in their more traditional tents. Very happy to see them move to the lighter fabrics. That solid fabric panel I think is pretty important because it helps prevent drafts in windy conditions, adds a little bit of privacy, and can help mitigate spin drift and uh, rain spray that's bouncing off the uh, bottom if the porch is open, for example. The poles are Easton Technology Products carbon fiber poles. These are very thin, very flexible and very strong poles for their weight. I was a little bit nervous about using these poles, but that nervousness has disappeared now that I've had a chance to put the tent through a good storm and seeing how stable the poles actually keep this tent. However, they are thin and they are carbon. Carbon is brittle and when it breaks, it breaks catastrophically. So uh, do use care in using the carbon poles with this tent, especially during setup. Obviously, you're not gonna put this tent um, in a winter storm above the tree line. Let's talk about setup real quick. Now, in the instructions for the double rainbow, and I haven't seen the instructions for the double rainbow lithium yet, but the instructions for the double rainbow suggest inserting the arch pole first and then staking out the body of the tent. With this tent, um, especially in windy conditions, my recommendation is that you stake out the body first and then insert the arch pole carefully. Otherwise, you run the risk of having a wind gust grab the tent with the carbon arch pole inserted already, and you run the risk of either damaging the tent or the pole if you're not able to control the whole structure. So I'm a big fan of staking down what you can and then taking care of the poles after that. Okay, let's walk through a setup video and we can see exactly how to set it up. 
first step is to stake out the four corners of the tent. So the first pole we're going to insert is the main cross body pole and this is a carbon fiber pole and it gets threaded in through a pole sleeve. And this pole is what provides the main structure of the tent. And that pole sleeve gets inserted into a tip pocket right there. And then we'll come down to this end and continue threading. a buckle and a strap here that tightens the pole up just like that. It's, it's very much similar to Hilleberg's design for tensioning poles. And then we'll come back to this end and do the same thing here. And just tension that down nice and tight. Okay, the next step is to insert the cross strut. So we have a pole tip there and this gives the tent some headroom in the middle and then we can stake out the vestibules. And then you can go around and change. <laughs> well, it looks like we'll get a good test of it today. And then we'll go around and tension the corners of the tent until the tension throughout the body is evened out. So let's talk about livability now. This is a double entrance, side entry tent with two vestibules. Each vestibule is fairly sizable. Obviously, it, they run the length of the tent, which is quite long and about 26 inches deep. They're big enough to store a moderately sized backpack and your shoes and any other gear you have. Now, with two people in the tent, I don't know that it's going to be a practical tent for cooking in the vestibule because one person is going to have all their gear in one vestibule. The other person is going to have their gear in the other vestibule and there's not going to be much left over. And if there are two full size pads inside the tent, there is some room for gear storage at the head and foot ends because the tent is longer than a long sleeping pad by several inches. But again, you're not going to be able to clear out the vestibules enough to cook in them adequately. This is a 27 ounce tent, so it's entirely feasible to uh, be a solo tent. And if you're willing to carry the 27 ounces, which is not very much for a tent like this, you will have a palace to live in with plenty of room inside and in the vestibules to do whatever you want in terms of organizing and sorting gear, storing wet gear in one vestibule, cooking in the other. Okay, let's explore the interior volume a little bit. I'm I've scooched over to one side of the tent here, so I'm on a 25 inch wide pad. And so the, the bottom of the floor is 50 inches wide, which is big enough for two uh, 25 inch wide pads, of course, with no room really left over. So they will be very close to each other. Obviously, if you're using uh, 20 inch pads, you're going to have more width in the tent. Now that width goes all the way down the length of the tent, so the foot end of the tent is no narrower than the middle of the tent. So this back wall is 50 inches wide. So how does this impact headroom? So this peak right here where the door starts to slope down on either side, this peak is 24 inches wide. <coughs> so 
at its narrowest, the peak, the tin is 24 inches wide at the top. It's 50 inches wide at its widest at the bottom. And then this door slopes down from this 24 inch width down to the 50 inch width at the bottom. So if you're in here with two people, one person will undoubtedly be brushing up against this mesh door at any given time if they're up and moving around, unless they kind of scooch towards the center. And then there's plenty of room out here and you're a little closer to your partner, of course. So all in all, this is a very suitable two person tent, I think. For one person, it's an absolute palace. So as you can see in my messy bedroom here, I've got gear strewn about all over the place. And I've got one vestibule set up as a porch there. And the other one I have um, just an open vestibule door to have some airflow through here as I start to dry things out. Now one thing of note, even when I'm sitting up, there's plenty of headroom in here. Now I'm not tall, I'm 5'7", and I've got several inches of headroom up here. So if I scoop my sleeping bag down towards the end of the tent, you know, I might brush up against that wall a little bit, but for the most part, um, you're not touching the wall, and I could move my pad this way to help that. But if I wanted to have some room at the head to store gear and whatnot, then let's take a look here. Um, I'm not gonna brush the wall of the tent at all, getting up and down. So again, a lot of interior volume in this shelter for two people, tremendous amount of space if you're solo like me right now. One of the unique features of the double rainbow is the ability to set up the vestibule doors in what's called a porch mode. This gives a lot more space inside the vestibule, which makes it totally feasible for cooking. When the vestibule doors are closed, it's actually a little too short to cook safely in the tent. I did cook last night. I heated up some soup um, with the vestibule doors closed because it was very stormy, but I wasn't able to cook in the vestibule because the roof of the vestibule just came down too close to the stove. So I brought my stove just inside the inner tent. I don't really recommend that because the, the upper vents are pretty small in the tarp tent double rainbow and I just don't think you have enough airflow to safely cook in the tent. But put it in porch mode and all of a sudden you have this incredibly useful covered protected space that is totally feasible for cooking with a gas stove, but maybe still not white gas. <laughs> okay, so I'll show how the porch works. Basically, you unzip the vestibule doors stake them out taut using trekking poles and a couple of guy lines and then there's this little flap here that can be unfurled and then there's a hook and loop closure right here that can be used to provide a little bit of a canopy over overhead canopy for um, rain or rain protection or shade the only limitation i see to this little construction is the hook and loop closure is just a small tab right there it's about Oh, three or four inches long and then there's a gap here so I imagine in a driving rainstorm uh, water's gonna drip in through that gap um, so you know I guess my preference would be to bring the hook and loop all the way over I understand that adds complexity and cost and probably a tiny bit of weight but that might uh, make this a more rainproof design Inside the tent, there are two small accessory pockets that you can use to store your phone and your light and things like that, and a bunch of clips inside the tent. Now, some of those clips are used for an optional condensation liner, but they can be used to string a clothesline or hang a flashlight or whatever else you want to use them for. One last comment with respect to livability and ease of use. The Tarp Tent Lithium Series uses magnetic door closures. Now, most tents use some combination of either fabric strips or uh, elastic draw cord and toggles and loops to secure a rolled door as you uh, roll it up and want to keep it out of the way. The Tarp Tent Lithium Series uses dynamic composite fabric strips combined with magnets, which is really unique. And, it, and I wasn't a huge fan of this setup when they introduced it in the original tent in this line, which is the Notch Lithium in 2018. But all their tents in 2020 have completely redesigned this system. They've changed the location of the, of the tie-outs and the, they lengthen the strips of fabric that's used to secure the doors. This changes everything and they are very easy to use and they stay secure even in high winds now. I'm a big fan of this closure system and I wish now 
this was on all my tents. So much better than fiddling with toggles and loops, especially with one hand or if it's dark. Okay, let's talk about finish quality. So Tarp Tent has been making tents in its Seattle factory for quite some time. And as is the case with most domestic tent manufacturing here in the United States, the quality has been good, but not, not exceptional. It's certainly not up to the level of quality that you'll find in a major brand like uh, Mountain Hardware or MSR or REI tents, which are made in Asian factories where tent manufacturing is their area of specialty. Now, starting in 2020, Tarp Tent is moving some of their production to an Asian tent manufacturer. This tent was produced in that factory. And I will say that the finished quality of the tarp tents that you're going to find coming out of that factory today are completely different than what you've seen from tarp tent in the past. The cut and sew quality is exceptional, it's precise, and the finishing quality in terms of sewing manufacturing standards are right in line with what you would expect from major brands. So kudos to tarp tent. I know it's a difficult decision to move some manufacturing offshore, it's hard to blame them because there just isn't any quality tent manufacturing facilities here in the United States. So I'm really happy to see that the quality of these tents is continuing to increase in contrast to a lot of cottage brands that we see move overseas where the quality actually goes down. Let's talk about wind performance. So this is not a tent I would want to camp in above the tree line in the mountains during a winter storm. I just think that there's not enough structure to it with that arch pole and these huge broadside fabric panels. That said, we had some pretty gusty winds last night. I clocked one gust that was in the low 30s. It hit the tent broadside and I felt secure and stable inside the tent. I also have two external guy lines uh, that are stabilizing the arch pole right now and I think that helps a lot. And you can even add several guy lines to each of the guy line tie out points on the arch pole to prevent it from shifting in various other directions. The other thing that's worth noting is that if a gust hits the tent broadside, the roof strut pole is not adjoined to the arch pole. This is a really important feature because I know that there's a temptation to maybe put a hub there or, um, connect them with a piece of hook and loop closure strips or something like that. This is not wise for a tent like this. You want these things to move freely because that means when you get a huge wind gust into the side of the tent, you don't run the risk of any kind of fabric ripping or pole breakage because that joint is fixed. Now that those two poles are free to move independent of each other, you have a tent that is much more elastic in a strong wind and is less prone to failure. Now, I don't know if that was an intentional design decision or not, but I can certainly appreciate that these two poles move independently of each other in high winds. In terms of snow loading, I have to admit, I was initially concerned about snow loading. You've got, again, lots of fabric, not a lot of pole structure. However, there's a lot of things going for the tarp tent double rainbow lithium. You've got this arch pole that creates steep end walls. You have a roof strut that provides additional overhead structure, and you have Dyneema composite fabrics for the fly material, which doesn't elongate when it gets wet, and so the tent maintains good tension. We had three or so inches of very heavy snow last night, and there were no snow loading issues with the tent at all. It held the snow just fine. It did not lose its shape. The snow pressed into the vestibules a little bit, but that was mainly because snow was piling on at the lower end of the vestibule doors and then pressing in, but again, it had no impact on the performance of the tent. All right, let's talk condensation resistance. Um, keep in mind, this is a hybrid single double wall tent. Because most of the body is a single wall construction, you're going to have condensation inside. That's just, that's a given with any tent like this. With a caveat, Dyneema Composite Fabrics has a different emissivity than Sil Nylon or Sil Poly, and so it's more condensation resistant. In addition, because DCF doesn't elongate when it gets wet, you have less tent sag in response to condensation, and it's more likely that condensation droplets are going to slide down the tent wall rather than drip straight down on you. And I certainly experienced that last night. I had 
tremendous condensation in the tent. I'll explain why in a second. But those condensation droplets, they rolled right down the wall towards the edges of the tent, and I've had very little condensation dripping on me. Here's why I had a ton of condensation last night. I had a wet hike into this camp yesterday, so I got into the tent and I had tons of wet gear. Uh, most of my wet gear I stored in the vestibules, like my shoes, my socks, my rain jacket, my backpack. The, these were all really wet. But we also had the perfect night to create condensation. Outside temperatures were below freezing by a few degrees. Inside temperatures were above freezing by a few degrees. Outside humidity was 90 to 92 percent. Inside humidity, as you can imagine, was 95 to 100. Now, I cooked in the tent last night, so that added a little moisture. And as I spent more time in the tent, I'm obviously contributing to the moisture in the tent through respiration. So by the middle of the night, tent humidity had reached 100%. So lots of condensation. Now, I'm not as concerned about condensation is, as I am with where does that condensation go. I want that condensation to roll down the interior fly and hit the edges of the tent so that it's not dripping on me. And with that in mind, the tarp tent double rainbow design does a very good job at promoting this. So condensation is dripping down this steep sidewall and there's these mesh gutters back here. And they serve a couple of purposes. One is a vent where they can bring in cool, dry air, but the other is um, it allows that condensation to drip down, hit the mesh, and then fall to the ground rather than down on the tent floor. So that's that's kind of a nice feature. Now, Tarp Tent also offers as an option a condensation liner of breathable nylon that can be clipped into the tent. I highly recommend it if you're doing an extended multi-day trip with a down bag in an environment like this. The Tarp Tent Double Rainbow is big enough to accommodate two large people. Now, if you put two large hikers side by side in this tent, they are going to brush their heads and feet against the tent walls, especially in the morning when they're getting up and getting ready and changing clothes and doing all that kind of stuff. And that's when you get the condensation rainstorm. So something to be aware of. But as a solo hiker in this tent, condensation was a non-issue, even with an enormous amount of condensation inside the tent. And I've had the porch open now for a couple hours this morning and the tent's already uh, starting to dry out inside and I imagine by the time I break camp I'll have very little condensation remaining. I have a nice breeze blowing through the tent right now and it's drying things out just fine. Okay, let's talk about warmth. This is mostly a single wall tent so don't expect it to retain a lot of body heat. However, last night I had a low temperature of 29 and inside the tent it was 34 to 35 degrees, 36 degrees even at one point. So it's retaining some heat and I think it's doing this because of its hybrid double wall design and you've got two vestibules that are helping retain heat as well with those side walls. Okay, that's it. Be sure to check out our review of the shelter at the link in the description. This is the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Lithium, 27 ounces. Happy trails and stay warm.